My name is Maureen Curley. I'm a psychiatric nurse practitioner with a focus on women's mental health and I treat women um, who have experienced all types of mood and anxiety disorders related to pregnancy, postpartum, pregnancy loss, including abortion aftermath. So in the women that I treat, I can tell you that those that have had abortions fare much worse. They have higher rates of depression, higher rates of self-destructive behavior, and higher rates of and risk for suicidal ideation. As a young woman, Christy Baller suffered through all those things. At age 16, she had an abortion. Eventually, Christy found peace by converting to Catholicism and going through one of the church's healing ministries. One of the beautiful things about the Catholic Church is that you can find forgiveness for sin, but not condemnation, because that's what Jesus offered. Christy participated in Rachel's Vineyard, a weekend retreat open to men and women offered in a group setting. Another Catholic ministry, Project Rachel, uses one-on-one -on -one meetings with specially trained priests and mental health counselors to offer confidential help. Programs like uh, Project Rachel and other similar programs help women and, and men who have had to experience an abortion help them to understand God's love, that God is merciful, that God wants them to move forward, not to be stuck in the past. I think they have to accept the fact that yes, they, they were involved in abortion or a woman had an abortion, but that they, they can be released from the chains of, of that guilt. You don't have to be Catholic to participate in the Catholic healing programs. They're open to anyone impacted by abortion, including healthcare workers. Early in her career, Maureen worked as a recovery room nurse, caring for women right after they had an abortion. Early in my career, I was um, influenced thinking abortion was um, the best answer for an unattended pregnancy and not particularly practicing my Catholic values during, my, during that time. And then when I um, began to see some of the impact of that through the literature and through the patients that I was treating, um, as a, in, in a mental health capacity, I began to recognize um, that, th that I needed to uh, reconcile this within the church. And so I participated in the Project Rachel. I definitely experienced a, um, a burden lifted and being uh, in sort of receiving the mercy of God and being embraced by the church. And I think that's critical, a, a, an amazing gift and I'm passionate about other people having that as well. For the past 20 years, Maureen has been working with various Project Rachel teams. She's dedicated to efforts to expand and publicize the program, with assistance from pro-life ministries like the one at St. Joseph Parish in Avon Lake. We see our role as spreading the word and, and, and getting the message out there. Project Rachel is so needed because women who've had an abortion they hide it, they're embarrassed, and I think there are women in that situation that, that we can um, extend a hand to. Christy is also part of a Project Rachel team to help others impacted by abortion. And she's part of several pro-life ministries to warn people about the trauma it causes. Once you've experienced that kind of incredible um, reconciliation with with God and with your child and eventually with yourself too and you realize um, what a gift what a gift he has given um, to me he saved my life from suicide to begin with and then he didn't he didn't just abandon me God just kept putting it on my heart and moving things in my direction that he wanted me to speak out and help others. Someone remembers, someone cares. Your name is whispered in someone's prayers. Most of us who grieve our babies do not have a grave site, and that's one of the things that complicates our grief. It is such a blessing to have a place like this. This memorial garden for lives lost to abortion is a place of deep reflection for 68-year-old Christy Baller. 
It's part of a spiritual journey that began in 1972. Christy was a junior at Alliance High School when she and her boyfriend learned she was pregnant. I was 16 years old. My family did not obviously know that I was pregnant, so I had friends who took me over to, to the Planned Parenthood and they explained that it would be a very simple procedure. I could go on with my life as if I'd never been pregnant. And the other thing they told me was, it's just a clump of tissue. I remember the exact words, like a tumor. They sent us to New York, um, into New York to have the abortion. And it was quite a large facility, lots of women. I felt like just a number. The ironic thing is, is the procedure itself didn't take that long, but it's not something that is over when you walk out the door. Oftentimes women are not informed, either by the media or by the public or by their medical professionals, of some of the aftermath that they can expect after an abortion. In my practice, I see women who experience all types of reproductive events, and I will say that those who experience abortion tend to have higher rates and more severe depression, anxiety, PTSD, and self-destructive behaviors because of the guilt involved. There are generations of wounded women walking around. We know just epidemiologically the increasing incidence of substance abuse, trauma, depression, anxiety. Many of these are linked to a prior abortion that has never been dealt with. Christy was one of those wounded women. And one night I was particularly depressed and I took a bottle of tequila and a handful of secondals, which were always good for when you couldn't sleep. And I decided this is it. I fell to my knees and began sobbing. I thought maybe there is a God and so I at that point I just reached out and and asked him would you help me help me and that's when I had a very profound spiritual encounter and the message he was giving me was that he loved me Christy began a spiritual journey that eventually led her to become Catholic. She also participated in a Catholic healing program for those impacted by abortion. That's where I was able to reconcile with God, reconcile with my child, and reconcile with myself. These are gems within the church that really do represent the church's faith in action. I know that women who have gone through these programs experience a dramatic conversion and transformation of their lives. Part of Christie's healing program included naming her baby and writing him a letter. Because of what God has done for me, what Jesus did for me, there is hope that I will, I will see my son one day. I'll see him in heaven, I'll meet him there, and I hope he'll, I hope he'll be proud of me. Christy is now part of several pro-life ministries and works with the Catholic Healing Program Project Rachel to help others seeking confidential ways to cope with abortion aftermath. That's been another opportunity to help those who have been touched by abortion and give them the same hope that I was given. Choosing to abort your child is something that you will have to live with and you will wish you hadn't. It will haunt you in some way, shape, or form. So choosing life is not only choosing life for your child, but it's choosing a better life for you. The Gabriel Project targets women who have unplanned pregnancies, as well as those women who find themselves pregnant and happy about it, but may not have the proper 
financial, social, or maybe spiritual backing that they would like. A woman may contact the Gabriel Project after seeing our phone number on either a flyer or on a sign somewhere. Well, the Gabriel Project here at St. Raphael has about, well actually has over 40 uh, volunteers in varied groups of responsibility. I was drafted to do the sign and also drafted to be a Joseph. There's, there are five Josephs. Our job as a Joseph is to deliver and assemble cribs, baby furniture, drop off whatever diapers and baby clothes that the angels uh, supply us with. The job of an angel is to inform the mom of the agencies that are available to her to hopefully fill the needs that she will have. Whether it's housing or furniture or clothing or diapers. Our mom works full time and has a six year old. It's for someone that's pregnant that's juggling doctor's appointments or has another child at home, has a full time job. Um, their time to investigate a lot of these resources is limited and so we save her time by doing research and reaching out for her. When I found out I was pregnant, it wasn't planned, but I always knew in my heart that I wanted to keep the baby. So far from the Gabriel Project, I've gotten a crib, diapers, a resource to help me get a car seat, and it's been good for me and the baby because it's stressful living paycheck to paycheck. I liked working with Connie and Laura because um, they made me feel accepted and they had good communication and we were able to talk about personal things. It makes me feel good to know that there are people out there who don't know me personally or know my story but they still support me and support my baby. I think if you're pregnant and you're having an unplanned pregnancy it's important to know that there are other resources out there to help you and that not keeping the pregnancy isn't the only way. We are an alternative to abortion, and every life that's saved is, is precious. When I hold my son, I feel his love and his support and his energy, and I know that I made the right decision to keep him.